Okay, so that's how you can make a periodic table from math. And the other thing is that because the periodic table underlies chemistry, a lot of times you will see the periodic table and especially the Irving Williams series, you see that in all sorts of papers. The book talks about how it relates to biology, but you can see it in organic and inorganic chemistry as well. Um, by the way, I don't mention this in the book because I didn't know it until then, but the Irving Williams series was done by R.J.P. Williams, working with Irving, whatever his first name was. Uh, Williams was an undergraduate, doing undergraduate research when he developed that series, when he did the experiments that did it. And so he was doing chemistry experiments, he noticed this pattern, and they were able to get it, and that was, uh, so that, that shows you undergrads it, it can research too, and they can make things that can build for their whole lives. You don't have to do that, you know. Um, I don't have to do that, thank goodness, you know. But it's nice to know that it's possible because you can find out real stuff as an undergraduate. So one of the, thing, the, the trends that we observe, like actually Williams found trends of just binding of transition metals to other things, and he noticed that there was this trend through all of them. And you can still see that trend. Here's a trend for a specific case where you have carbon monoxide, CO, binding to transition metals. And it turns out that this is in a metal organic framework, which is like a claw that holds the metal in place and lets the CO come in and bind the metal. The main thing that's happening is you have the CO coming in and binding a divalent metal cation. It's a little bit like what goes on in hemoglobin. Okay? It's in fact a lot like what goes on in hemoglobin. But because they were building these metal organic frameworks, they were able to put in whatever metal they wanted. And they were able to test exactly, if I just change the metal, how does that change binding? And so they, this is the metal organic framework they have right here. But what, what we're really interested in is just the metal. You see how it's highlighted on the right there. And they have the different colors for the different metals. And then they see how CO binds. And it comes in and it binds. And you can see that they have um, a bond angle like 167 for the yellow magnesium, and they have a bond length, 2.41 angstroms for, uh, for the magnesium as well. And again, you see that they have a bond angle and length for CO binding the metal, like this, for each of these, how many is it, six. So the cool thing is we can put them in periodic table order. Oh, and I can see right there, you can look at the bond lengths, and you can see that they get longer as you, if you put them in, in periodic table order, or actually what I did is I just put them in order of length. The longest bond is for zinc. The shortest bond is for nickel. And so you can just measure the bond lengths from crystallography and you put them in order and you get that order. If you do binding strength, binding strength is related to bond length, but you can, it's a different technique that measures it. So you use a technique to measure binding strength, how much CO binds, and you can see that you have uh, the, what's the best binding one? The black line, which is nickel. And what's the worst binding one? The green line, which is zinc. And in between, you have some that are closer to others, but you have the same extremes. The shortest bond, strongest binding. And that's good physical chemistry. You know, if, if two atoms are closer together, it's going to be harder to pull them apart. Okay? But they're closer together uh, because of periodic table chemistry. And so from the periodic table, just the periodic table, you could make a good first guess as to what the, um, what the order would be. So here's the data that they actually, and there's one more thing they measure. They measure heats of adsorption. And that's why I want to show you. It's a, it's a Q value, so it's a chapter one value. and it involves uh, heats of adsorption. You see, again, nickel has the largest heat of adsorption, and zinc has the smallest. And if you look in between, the order of the in-between things is about the same when you go from thing to thing. So it looks like these things are all in order. And if you compare this to the Irving Williams series, you'll see that um, it follows. The only thing about the Irving Williams series is you'll see it goes up and then down. Um, so it's not a simple line, but it is a V shape. But these follow that same kind of trend. And if you look at, especially at zinc, um, zinc's way out on the end. They don't have copper here, because copper is usually stickier than zinc is. But you can say, in general, you can have this relationship of stickiness, um, and you can have uh, relationships from different data that correlate, and you can relate it to the orbitals on the, uh, on the iron atoms and things like that, on the metal atoms. 
and you can relate it to the periodic table. So the periodic table shapes all these three lines of data that they have here. And they cite the Irving Williams series in the, um, in the thing itself. And so this shows you the Irving Williams series showing up in chemistry, in inorganic chemistry, which is Williams' main area. So I'm sure that he's very um, glad to, uh, to know about this. 